Do you ever wish that you could go back in time and prevent the COVID pandemic from ever occurring? Well, a group of scientists from the University of Queensland in Australia have been exploring exactly what they believe they have proven that time travel may be possible. These physicists, quote, used mathematical modeling to reconcile Einstein's theory of general relativity with classical dynamics. Here to discuss this complex issue further is program director at the National Science Foundation, astrophysicist Dr. Joe Pash. Great to see you, Dr. Joe. Good to see you, Doc. Nice seeing you both. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right. So tell us what they've discovered and what you make of it. Well, so time travel is a neat thing, right? And if we could wait a couple of seconds, maybe my future self will show up right now. <laughs> oh, no, it didn't happen. It didn't work out. So, not yet. <laughs> not yet, not yet. But, you know, so obviously the subject of science fiction and, and, and lots of science, right? It's allowed by general relativity, time travel is. But there's a number of issues. And one of those issues is the so-called grandfather paradox. I'm, I'm sure... Uh, you've you've all heard of this. It's the 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 possibility that a time traveler goes back in time, changes the past, and that affects the future. So I go back in time. I do something that in, inadvertently leads to the death of my grandfather before he's married, and so therefore I can't exist. But yet I'm there, and so that's a paradox. And so for um, uh, for for many scientists, this seems to have been a limit on uh, disallowing time travel. But as you noted, these researchers in Australia, an undergraduate and his advisor, uh, a couple months ago uh, came out with a paper showing that they had developed mathematics indicating that this paradox can be avoided seemingly. Now, I'm not going to get into the math. Math is hairy. Uh, can't say that I fully understand it as well. Mm -hmm. But, but, but that's irrelevant because what they seem to be saying is that the timeline, the uh, progression of time, rearranges itself. That is, it self-corrects to avoid any paradox. Hmm. So, for example, let's give an example here. Um, I, I travel back in time to stop COVID-19, and I want to keep patient zero from being infected, right? And so I travel back in time, and... Uh, obviously, if I stop patient zero from from being infected and I stop the pandemic, uh, then that eliminates my motivation for going into the past. And that is the crux of, of the paradox, mm. the grandfather paradox. Mm -hmm. So okay. what these research... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. I was... I, it, it, would you go ahead. Yeah, I had a follow-up question on time travel. Yeah, yeah, of course. So what these researchers have found in the mathematics is that the events would recalibrate themselves. So maybe... Um, maybe I go and I stop patient zero, but I then become patient zero and I start the infection. Or someone else becomes patient zero that's outside of you know, the realm of, of my being able to manipulate. So ultimately, the end point is still the same. There's, there's still going to be a pandemic, um, but the particular events, maybe the details of the timeline change. And wow. so the mathematics are showing that you really can't go back in, in time and affect an endpoint, the endpoint will always be the same. It, it, we may get to it in, in a different way. Mm -hmm. huh. So fundamentally, it's showing that mathematically this paradox doesn't exist and that time travel is possible, again, mathematically. Huh. Wow, fascinating. I mean, that seems like it has some very philosophical implications, too, about the nature of, like, destiny and fate. You know, if these are the sequence of events that are yeah. going to happen, and even if you go back and are like, patient zero is not going to be patient zero things will automatically rearrange themselves to make sure that the basic contours of what unfolds still unfolds. That's, that's pretty wild to wrap your head around. Yes, indeed. And, um, the, you know, the, the concept of time travel itself is, 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 pretty, is pretty wild. Um, but, but again, this is showing that from the, the pure mathematics perspective, that these, the, it, you know, there isn't an issue. Yeah. Um, so are, are you buying it, Dr. Joe? <laughs> mathematically, I suspect it's probably okay. Does that yeah. mean that time travel is possible and that we will be seeing, again, you know, my future self showing up right now? Sure. Uh, probably uh, I'm, I'm on the fence. I, I wouldn't hold my breath. Okay. Um, well, I follow your lead. So. And then one more yeah. for you. There, there was this nugget um, that I read about. They say they use mathematical modeling to reconcile Einstein's theory of general relativity with classical dynamics, something that people have been trying to do for a very long time. Speak to, th to that, uh, the complexity of that problem and what they figured out there. Well, I think it's just that 
you know, in in um, general relativity, general relativity allows time travel, and uh, both forward and 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 backward. And we're talking about backward time travel, of course. And so there is general relativity that's saying it's possible, and yet there's other aspects such that pop that cause the paradoxes to pop up that are showing it to be problematic. And so I think the reconciliation of those two comes out in the mathematics that was developed by these two researchers in Australia. Gotcha. Got it. Really interesting to puzzle over. Um, Dr. Joe, thank you so much. Enjoy the holidays. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You too. Thank you. We'll have more rising for you after this.